Endometriosis is a, a common condition. It affects 6 to 10 percent of reproductive aged women, usually women in their 20s to 30s. Uh, that really represents a condition of chronic pain, infertility, heavy irregular menstrual periods, and oftentimes painful intercourse. Um, technically, it refers to the presence of uh, cells that are normally in the uterine lining, the uterine cavity, that have implanted themselves in areas outside the uterus in, in, the, uh, in the abdomen, like the ovaries, the pelvic side wall, sometimes the bowel, sometimes the bladder. These uh, abnormal implantation sites get activated during the time of a woman's menses and can cause scarring, pain, and irregular bleeding. We don't really understand the exact uh, reason why some women get endometriosis and some women don't. Uh, most women have uh, what we believe is some degree of backflow of the menstrual blood into the abdomen. So some of it goes out, most of it goes out, some of it backflows into the abdomen through the fallopian tubes. Uh, however, you know, the majority of women don't develop this condition, so we don't think that that's the only cause. There's other causes, cell-to-cell -cell transfer, other types of technicalities that cause this to spread. But really, what it comes down to for, uh, you know, f for the people that get it are, it's a, it's a familial, it's an, inher an inherited condition that runs in families, so women, uh, who have a family member with endometriosis are 10 times more likely than someone that's not to develop this condition. We think it also has some kind of an autoimmune uh, uh, you know, component to it where some women's immune response just doesn't, uh, doesn't sort of fight off the, the, the implants that can cause these, cause these symptoms and it, it their bodies allow these uh, implants of endometrial cells to, to grow in places it's not supposed to grow. I think the most common symptom that I hear about is painful intercourse. Uh, this is a, a, a problem that a lot of women have that they don't necessarily want to talk to anyone, even their doctor, about. Um, and many women live years with this thinking that it may be normal for them. Um, but that's probably the one that stands out to me as the most significant problem and um, you know I think the heavy painful periods is also uh, an indicator but certainly there's a lot of other things that cause that problem too like uterine fibroids or adenomyosis or other types of conditions uh, not just endometriosis. Um, I think that th th some outlying conditions could be unexplained fertility uh, in, a, in a woman that's had um, you know a, had been worked up it for infertility in, in a more standard fashion and still doesn't have a, a, a reason why. Um, and then, you know, also uh, blood in the urine or blood in the stools can also be a, a reason why or it can be a, a, a source of endometriosis because sometimes as the disease becomes progressive it can invade into those structures like the bladder and the bowels and cause um, cause those symptoms. Any woman in, the, in her reproductive uh, years that has chronic pelvic pain needs to be evaluated for endometriosis. It's, it's a vague um, entity in that a lot of women have pain. We can't necessarily just have a conversation and then decide that it's, we know the reason why. There's certain, there's, there's a lot of components that go into evaluating that. The exam Sometimes a surgery is needed to rule in or rule out endometriosis or other conditions. But, uh, but yeah, pelvic pain is a, is a significant factor as well. One thing we know about endometriosis is that the, the degree of uh, volume of disease or stage of disease, and, and really what that refers to is the amount of implants and the amount of scar tissue that it causes in a woman's body, doesn't necessarily correlate to symptoms. So some women with, with smaller amount of implants or um, what would appear to be uh, stage one or very mild disease can have some of the worst pain symptoms. And, and you know, uh, on the other hand, some women that have terrible disease where if you were to go inside and, and surgically evaluate them, they would have significant scarring, significant uh, ovarian cysts, 
full of endometriosis, et cetera, may or may not have really any symptoms. We don't, we don't really understand why that's the case, but you know, extent of disease doesn't necessarily correlate with symptoms, and it is progressive. It does, it does worsen over time, um, and, and really it's estrogen dependent. So that's why it occurs during the woman's early, or during the woman's reproductive or menstruating years because as the presence of estrogen is, is there and floating you know, through the body, it causes these symptoms to, to grow and to worsen. The, the office exam component is an important first step in diagnosis. Uh, I, I take a patient's history carefully, uh, considering their, their family history and the symptoms that they're currently having and have been having since they started having periods as a young woman. Then we perform an office exam where we're feeling for specific points of pain and uh, abnormal tissue or nodularity that involves a visual inspection with a speculum exam and also a, a bimanual exam or a palpation exam where I'll feel spots inside the vagina and along the abdomen and the bladder area that could be sources of pain. Then if it's determined that the symptoms and the exam are significant enough that I would, I have a high suspicion for endometriosis, we take the patient to the operating room to perform a laparoscopy where we visualize and resect abnormal lesions. These uh, biopsies are then processed by the pathologists who give a report as to each individualized specimen. I usually label them A through whatever so that I know where exactly I got it from, whether it's the left side or the underneath the uterus near the bladder, et cetera. So we have specifically targeted biopsies labeled appropriately. And then we put the pieces together. When, when I see the patient back in the office, we review the operative note, the findings visually and surgically, and also the pathology findings. When I'm going in to evaluate for endometriosis, first of all, the, the office exam is an important component of deciding to take a patient to the, to the operating room because I'm, I'm feeling for particular areas of pain on a specific, I, I have a specific way that I map pain when I do an exam in the office. Uh, and then, you know, we also are feeling for areas of nodularity um, uh, where it, it possibly represents an implant of abnormal tissue where I can feel a, a hard spot sort of on the inside of the back of the vagina near the cervix or, you know, near the bladder or something like that. Um, and then when I go, go in and look surgically, you know, we're, we're looking for areas of, um, of scarring, of abnormal gathering of the tissue, uh, the, the peritoneum or the, the surface of the abdomen, the lining of the abdomen can have um, implants that may appear to be uh, black, brown, red, white, kind of a, the classic appearance is a powder burn uh, appearance of a kind of a, a blackish, brownish, kind of a burst appearance on the surface. Um, so those are areas you know uh, most likely are, are related to endometriosis. You know, however, there has been a significant amount of overcalling of disease by visual interpretation alone. So one of, the, one of the things that I emphasize with my patients is that we really need to take biopsies of these samples because we need a pathologic diagnosis of the tissue, which involves taking a specimen out sending it to the lab and letting the pathologist look at that sample and see if there is really what are the cells that normally line the uterus, the endometrial glands and stroma in that sample. So we're looking for those specific areas of scarring, abnormal lesions, and then also there's just a sort of a, a feel that you get and a, and a visual appearance that you get by seeing many, many, many of these cases where you know that there's deeper structures involved in the disease. So it's not just the surface of the abdominal peritoneum or the abdominal lining that you're looking for. You, you actually need to uh, feel and visually evaluate the deeper structures to see if there's deeper lesions that need to be resected as well. You know, one of the ways that we commonly manage endometriosis, particularly in um, the early phases of management uh, is, is medical management. This can take the form of lifestyle modifications. Certain dietary changes can impact uh, a woman's preponderance for progression of endometriosis. 
uh, you know, also uh, medications. So oral contraceptive pills either used in a normal fashion where a woman would have a cycle every month or a, a continuous fashion where you would skip periods and, and keep a constant steady state of hormone in your system uh, can be efficacious in preventing the progression of endometriosis. Basically it stops the ovaries from ovulating and producing a higher volume of estrogen and thus slows the progression of the disease. Other forms of medical management include um, hormonal options that will actually suspend hormone production in the ovaries for a brief time and it puts a woman in a state of pseudomenopause for a short period of time which allows theoretically the regression of disease as well because it's not being fed by the estrogen during that time frame. What research has shown is that women can experience symptomatic relief from medical management but it's very unlikely to be a curative um, you know, modality for treatment and oftentimes requires you know, a, life, a lifetime of, of treatment which lends itself to, to other potential complications. Uh, so it's, it's more of a temporary measure than it is a, a long-term treatment for this disease. So surgical management of endometriosis most commonly involves laparoscopy uh, and what that involves is looking inside the abdomen with a camera and working with instruments uh, inside, inside the body while looking up on a, on a screen. This can be done either with traditional laparoscopy or with robotic laparoscopy. Uh, treatment differs in some people's opinion from burning or ablation of implants versus full resection of implants. There's, there's some good research that's recently come out to show that both modalities of treatment are efficacious in treating pelvic pain. However, long-term management of this disease is better served statistically by resection of, tish, of abnormal tissue and restoring the uh, pelvic anatomy to as normal as possible. Um, the, the, the biggest benefit came in reduction of painful intercourse uh, over the long term and also the reduction in need for medical therapies later in life. And, and really um, both, both forms of surgical management, whether or not it's just burning the areas with cautery uh, or full resection have been commonly used for many years by surgeons that treat endometriosis. Um, however, I feel that through my training and experience and uh, kind of through publicized research that I just addressed, that resection of the disease, of the disease, of the disease tissue is really the gold standard treatment modality for this condition. My aim is to evaluate the pelvis as thoroughly as possible and one of the ways that I feel I can better do that is with the use of robotic assistance because it allows me to have high definition 3D vision inside the pelvis. Um, and then I, I aim to remove abnormal disease and if things are stuck to other things, if there's scar tissue, if the tubes are stuck, if the ovaries are stuck, if the uterus is adherent to something, I will take down those scarred areas and remove them in order to restore anatomy to no as normal as possible. The advantage for me with the robotic assistance in this area is that I have full wristed motion. I can work with greater dexterity and precision in, in resection of tissues. I'm working around complicated structures like the ureters, big blood vessels, nerves, you know, deeper structures of the pelvis that uh, you, know, you need to be careful about when you're working around. And, and for me, in my hands, I've found a significant advantage to doing these type of complicated surgeries robotically, and that's why I choose to use that technology. You know, also, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a, a, another technology called uh, Firefly, which is a, which is a, a product that use, allows us to use infrared vision to be able to see lesions in a different way by um, injecting a dye uh, into the patient's IV and watching that dye travel to certain locations within the pelvis that may or may not represent areas of greater density of endometriosis. 
that's a technology that I've been utilizing and I feel that it has an advantage uh, for identifying and resecting more disease as well. There are women that do have recurrences and sometimes that, re that results from not getting it all out the first time. Sometimes it just happens to where women have recurrences. But I think if you're aiming to have the best possible um, chance of not having a recurrence of this disease, it's resection. And you know, if women uh, experience recurrence, I, I, I will often see it maybe in about a two to five year time frame something like that after surgery. Well, we do uh, you know, several follow-up appointments uh, related to uh, symptoms. So I would, ex I would expect you know, a, a woman that has endometriosis that's proven by biopsy and I, and I feel that I've done a thorough resection of the disease to experience significantly less chronic pain uh, less difficulty with their periods, and hopefully in most cases, less painful intercourse. Um, so really we follow symptoms and seeing you know, how, they, how patients do afterwards. I, I also will, as an adjunct to surgery, keep a patient on a hormonal uh, birth control generally, or like an IUD, like a Marina IUD, to provide a, a, a low level of hormone in order to further bolster the, uh, you know, the, the surgical resection and prevent it from recurring. Uh, and then if a woman chooses to you know, try to get pregnant, she would come off the hormone for that time frame and then probably go back on it after the pregnancy. Mm -hmm.